Hey everybody, Mike here again on Arco Kenny Homestead. We've got a busy day in store today. Today we're fitting this, the Conversal 3G3024B, into our off-grid system. Now because this is 24 volt and our system is 12 volts, that means we have to rewire the batteries, rewire the solar panels, and do away with most of our original power wall. So in this episode you'll see how we switch the batteries from a 12 volt setup to a 24 volt setup, and how we switch the panels from a 12 volt setup to a 24 volt setup. So without further ado, let's cut the chit chat and get to it. So looking at our 12 volt battery bank, you can see to keep the system at 12 volts, each battery is connected positive to positive all the way along and negative to negative all the way along with the final leads on either end of the system making it act as a 12 volt bank. As you can see in the illustration, we have to change this and rearrange the wiring so that each battery will now be joined in pairs then linked in parallel finally once they are joined together to 24 volts. Okay we've just finished uh, rearranging the batteries into a 24 volt configuration as you can see there's a lot less cables involved so basically what we've got is this battery in series with this battery this battery in series with this battery and then both linked in parallel to each other to make a bank and as you can see on the multimeter we're reading 26.66 volts. Now for the next step of the project we're out at the back of the solar panel array and as I go up to the combiner box just behind two of the panels here you can see that the panels are joined two negatives to the blue two positives to the brown so now what we're going to do is we're going to change that around that's, that's wired in parallel the way it is there now so what we're going to do is we're going to change that around and wire two panels in series together so I'll have four sets of two panels wired in series So we've just completed our first string, there is now one negative from one panel and one positive from the other panel going into the wire out and the positive and negative, the other positive and negative from each panel now join together to make a series circuit. So I'm back out at the back of the solar array again where I've just finished rewiring it for the second time. Uh, first time I made a mistake, I wired the panels into four strings, two panels in each string, because I had it in my head that the batteries were 24 volts so I needed the panels to be at that level. And as it turns out, the, well, the inverter wasn't working and it was throwing up faults and I thought it was a faulty unit to be honest with you. So I rang up the guy I bought it off, James, and he was straight up, no problem. He said, hey look, if it's faulty, Give you your money back that's no problem and uh, he sounded totally on the ball and um, it turns out all that was wrong was that I hadn't read the spec sheet properly when it comes to the PV input PV input has to be minimum of 120 volts so I've just finished rewiring all of the eight panels into a string which brings me up to about 140 volts just to get within the threshold. Gone back up to the inverter and everything's working perfectly. So thanks James and his lovely partner Serena. Um, it was lovely to meet you both. And thanks for the eggs by the way as well. They gave us some chicken eggs um, from their chickens. They're absolutely delicious. Much nicer than the, the supermarket ones. So anyway, every day's a school day, huh? Next time, read the specs. One of the changes we had to make to our old system was that we had to move the lower panels which were set to get morning sun over there. Had to move them all up, put them in a line with the others and um, to get them into a nice tidy string and so that they're all getting the light at the same time, same angle and all the rest of that. So we've lost our morning charge ability. But that's no big deal. We can uh, we can just get more panels. So 
So that's it now, working away, happily enough. Taking charge in from the panels, but we haven't switched it on yet. So I gotta say, I'm absolutely chuffed with this unit here. It seems to be really, really just leagues ahead of anything we were using on the 12 volt scale um, in terms of quality. Also setting up the system um, in series, the batteries, I've got loads of leftover cables from the batteries which I can use again for, for adding more batteries to it because in series we're using less wiring. Same with the panels outside, setting them all up in a string of eight, using a hell of a lot less wiring than setting them up in parallel. I have loads of wire that's gone back into the shed now which I'm chuffed about, I can use it again for other stuff. Final part of the project then is getting the wind turbine hooked back into the system again. The wind control units, luckily enough, they're optional 12 or 24 volts, so they'll suit the 24 volt battery setup as well as the old 12 volt setup. So that's what I gotta do now, with the old power wall being pretty much redundant at this stage. Now I have to kind of make a new one here and get the wind turbine back up and running again. So that's the system completed, fully reassembled, back together. The DIY section over here, now the changes we've made, as you can see, there's a lot less there. I've kept the old solar controller. Um, which again will run on 24 volts as well and basically um, we lost the morning panels down below when we had to set everything up into a string so that also means that we're getting a hell of a lot less charge for winter time now for the wind turbine system we've made a couple of changes I've set up a switch and a relay which are spare parts from my old motor trade days um, basically the controller here can be switched on and off now what this switch does actually switches the relay and the relay switches on the heavy current through the, uh, through the control unit. So this can just be switched off on days when there's no wind. And that way, the control unit isn't using any power drain in the system. We set up just a little fuse board here as well for the interior light and all of the systems here on this. So that's it, system complete, ready to go. So that's it, job done. So let's get into it. Which is better, 12 or 24 volt systems? Well, there's advantages and disadvantages to both systems. Um, if you're on a big budget, if you can spend a lot of money straight off the bat, I would suggest going for a 24 volt system straight away. If you're on a small budget, start off with the 12 volt system. It will do the job to a certain extent. For 12 volt systems, you only have to buy one battery at a time, whereas for 24 volt systems, you have to buy two at a time to connect them in series. Same with the panels, 12 volt it's one at a time, you can do if you want. 24 volt, most of the time you'll need two at a time. As well as that, the 12 volt system needs more wiring and more heavy duty wiring, um, more connectors to go on them and all the rest of that, so that'll add a little bit extra cost. Whereas the 24 volts, you're going to use slightly less wiring. Um, the inverters then for the 12 volt systems, I found them to be fairly unreliable. Probably fine in a camper van, motorhome setting, whatever, where you're only using it for short periods of time, but if you're planning to run stuff in your house, you're going to need something that's pretty trustworthy. The 24 volt one so far seems to be a far higher quality. The dearest 12 volt one that we bought was 500 quid and this 24 volt one which incorporates a solar controller was 600. So for the extra few quid it really is worth the difference. If you're running a combination wind and solar system like we are, um, the wind turbines and generators available for those tend to be more compatible with 24 volts and upwards. Um, if you're linking one into a 12 volt system, chances are it's probably going to be working a little bit too much for the system and it'll kick the brake on uh, more often than it should and you'll just lose a lot of efficiency that way. I mean, if you're dropping a big budget, start off with a 24. If you're on a small budget, use a 12. The solar panels that we got, they're 800 quid for eight of them, so 100 quid each. And you can buy them one at a time if you're 12 volts, whereas the 24 volts you need two at a time. The batteries then were 600. The solar controller, um, it's 12 and 24 volt compatible, readily available on Amazon and eBay places like that. And a lot of the 12 volt stuff, by the way, is readily available on all of those online shopping websites at a slightly lower cost. The generator then for the wind turbine, that was 200. Wiring and connectors, all the bits and bobs. So we're sort of up, up near around 1800 quid now at this stage, including the inverters. All in all, we've spent 2400 quid. So if you compare that then to the bigger companies who are you know, selling packages and kits um, through brand systems and things like that, um, and in my personal opinion, they're a bit of a false economy because they'll sort of start off maybe at about eight or 10 grand and go up from there. And you might get some of that back maybe three or four through a grant system, but you're still spending seven or upwards um, just to get you know something that does run your house. And okay, a lot of those will be grid tied and they will be quite reliable systems, but it is a bigger spend at the offset. So listen, that's it for this video, guys. I wanna thank you very much for tuning in. More importantly, 
We'd love to hear some feedback from you. We've done a couple of videos now at this stage on a range of different topics of, of the homestead that we're building here. We'd love to hear what are you guys up to. Are you building off-grid DIY solar and wind systems like we are? Are you building homesteads or are you, you know, doing various aspects of it? Are you preserving food? Um, you know, are you homeschooling like we are? What are you guys up to? We'd love for you to let us know in the comments below or you can send us your story to arkilkennyhomestead at gmail.com and we'd love to hear all about it. So it's a lovely afternoon here. I've got to get on with the next job, which is building a chicken coop. So I hope you all have a great weekend and do take care of yourselves.